Gets us on scene quicker, allows us to make decisions quicker with better information. Money initially. That's Lieutenant Justin Elliott of the Spokane County Sheriff's Office talking about the Real Time Crime Center. It's a new project which uses video surveillance technology paid for with federal funds. Thanks for joining us. I'm Natalie Grant. Kirsten has the night off. The Sheriff's Office says it helps keep deputies safe and allows them to work more efficiently, but it also raises questions about whether video surveillance can lead to an invasion of privacy. New at six, Derek Dice takes an inside, it takes us inside the real time crime center in this special report. Deep inside the public safety building is a room full of mounted TV screens where the Spokane County Sheriff's Office can monitor live 911 calls, flock safety and traffic cameras, news feeds, and much more. It's called the Real Time Crime Center. So this gives us situational awareness from uh, video feeds, investigative databases, uh, license plate reader technology, uh, our CAD system uh, for awareness, uh, and just gives us the ability to react to crime and uh, other uh, public safety needs uh, right away. Lieutenant Justin Elliott says the real-time crime center, including all of its video surveillance technology, costs about $5 million in total, but it's almost entirely paid for by federal funds from the American Rescue Plan. It's money allocated to help organizations and governments recover from the COVID pandemic. Spokane County and the city of Spokane Valley are using it for community violence intervention. So that's what we focus on ultimately is how are we affecting uh, violence in the community. The sheriff's office has been using Using automated license plate readers for years. It says those, combined with the new flock safety cameras that can track wanted vehicles, takes their policing to a new level. Uh, we've had it assist us with uh, subjects fleeing uh, shootings, uh, dozens of re reported and recovered stolen vehicles um, over the last few months, uh, and additional arrests. Flock cameras were integral in arresting a man who attacked a woman on a trail in Liberty Lake in June. They were also extremely helpful in the response to the Gray and Oregon Road fires. We were able to pull up traffic uh, flows, identify where we were going to put our personnel, identifying where we needed to go to, um, you know, help people get evacuated. But surveillance like this raises questions about an invasion of privacy. And the Spokane Human Rights Commission wants to make sure it doesn't go too far. Are there frameworks in place that where you know that we somewhat there's some oversight are there frameworks in place so this doesn't get out of hand um, so this doesn't you know so our city doesn't become a you know a surveillance totalitarian state. Anoka Herod of the American Civil Liberties Union said in a statement these technologies have the potential to significantly chill constitutionally protected activities by allowing the government to create a detailed picture of the movements and therefore the lives of a massive number of community members doing nothing more than going about their daily business. Herod went on to say instead of investing millions of dollars into surveillance technologies that have been proven to be harmful and anti-democratic we could instead better invest that money into crisis support or violence interruption programs that are proven to prevent crime and benefit the community. Center Lieutenant center Elliott the understands the concerns but makes center. clear the technologies have no facial recognition abilities and data is only kept for 30 days. He says the sheriff's office is careful to stay within case, state and federal laws. It's something we are very dil diligent not to overstep, but we'll, like any other powers that we are entrusted with by the community, this is another one, and we make sure we carry it out within our values and our mission, uh, and we uh, are accountable to ourselves and the community, um, and, and just being transparent. The Sheriff's Office would like to expand the real-time crime center's capabilities to include things like drone response and accessing camera systems in local schools in the event of an emergency. Not for regular patrol, but in a significant emergency, we can access that. But the money from the American Rescue Plan runs out after 2026. So as it looks for more grants and revenue sources for 2027 and beyond. But we hope to show that the return on investment will greatly out, uh, outreach that figure uh, on positive impact and the overall positive feeling within the community of added safety. And hopefully the citizens are less nervous and the criminals are more nervous. I'm Derek Dice, 4 News Now.